Hi, and welcome to Tulare Hill. Tulare Hill is located in South San Jose. Uh, it's the terminus of, of San Jose, and it's the northern terminus of Coyote Valley, a uh, very special area here in Santa Clara Valley. Um, my name is Craig Edgerton, and uh, I used to be the executive director of the Land Trust of Santa Clara Valley and used to manage this property, so I've been up here for a while. Currently, uh, Tulare Hill, even though it's a single habitat, short grass, serpentine habitat, it's got four owners. And that's kind of a problem that we're hoping to get worked out eventually so that we have a single management plan for the whole uh, hill. Santa Clara County Parks owns the north end of the hill and they plan a cross trail to connect the two mountain ranges. The Habitat Agency owns some of it. PG&E, which you've seen some of the power lines, owns some of the land for their transmission line. And then of course the Land Trust owns this. So hopefully this will become a single managed hillside habitat uh, in the very near future. So we stopped here at this bend in the road by these rock outcrops to take a look at the endangered Santa Clara Valley Dudley. It's a little succulent plant that only grows on serpentine rock outcrops around the Santa Clara Valley. It's also a species that's covered by the Valley Habitat Plan. We're very interested in how many are out here, how are they reproducing, just the basic population biology of them as they occupy and different rock outcrops and thrive or wink out. The reason it's endangered is because it has a very limited geographic distribution just around the Santa Clara Valley, so it's endemic to Santa Clara County. And then also it's a very specialized habitat within the serpentine. And then it's even more limited because it's only on rock outcrops in the serpentine. So just a really tiny fraction of the landscape that's very patchy is suitable habitat for it. So this little rock garden here has the Dudleya in it. We also refer to them as dudes. There's a few dozen plants out here and some of them have been around for quite a while. So here's a couple of uh, large mature ones, but then if we look closely, see these little guys here that recruited in probably the last really wet year, which was 2019. So you can see they don't grow very fast. And another common name for the plant is live forever. We know they don't live forever, so this recruitment is really important for maintaining the population. So we're on the top of Tulare Hill here. Uh, Tulare Hill lies at the south end of San Jose, and we're looking south towards Coyote Valley, Morgan Hill, and then even beyond that you can see the Santa Lucia Range. So the rock below us is called serpentinite or serpentine. It's the California state rock. And it's actually material from the mantle that has like welled up along fault zones. And because we have so many fault zones in California, there's a lot of serpentinite. It weathers to a very unusual soil because of the composition of the rock. It's very high in magnesium, very low in calcium. It's thin, it's rocky. It's like the worst rating for agricultural soils in terms of fertility. But because it's so nutrient poor, it supports all these amazing native wildflowers because the grasses that dominate the rest of California grasslands that are on much more fertile soils can't establish here very easily. Because of the island-like nature of the serpentinite across the state there, and the unusual soil types, there's been a lot of species that have evolved on serpentine. A lot of our rare threatened and endangered flora are what we call serpentine endemics. You only find them on serpentine soils. Then also the serpentine has acted like a refuge for the rest of the California grassland uh, flora and fauna because it's not so easily invadable by the non-native annual grasses. Because of the profusion of wildflowers, it's the habitat for the bay checker spot butterfly. Now the bay checker spot butterfly absolutely requires a couple of the plants out here as caterpillar food or larval host plants. 
uh, one of which is the dwarf plantain, Plantago erecta, otherwise known as the most important plant in the world. The other plant is called owl's clover, and that's kind of real hit or miss from year to year and place to place. But there's literally a carpet of Plantago out here. So it's excellent habitat also because of the profusion of flowers that the adult butterflies can get their nectar from. Now the bay checker spot was listed as a threatened species back in 1987, so it has a fair amount of legal protection. Now, the true mother load of the bay checker spot population is this ridge over here to our east called Coyote Ridge, where there are thousands of acres of serpentine grassland with all kinds of canyons, and it's really like the prime checker spot habitat. Over here on Tulare Hill, there's a little over 300 acres of checker spot habitat. It's got you know, a fair amount of topography, which is good for the butterflies, but it's also in a very dry part of the Santa Clara Valley. I call this the banana belt of the Santa Clara Valley. It's like hotter and drier than all the areas around it. Because of that, the population here is very, very volatile. So when we first came out, we estimated they're on the order of 400 to 500 adult butterflies flying around here. This was in the late 1980s. It went extinct because of the really severe drought we had at the end of the 80s and into the early 90s. Then we found that it got repopulated naturally in the mid 1990s. And then by about 2002, we estimated there were a few thousand bay checker spot up here on Tulare Hill. So while we were working down here in the 1980s, we noticed that whenever this serpentine grassland was fenced off and the cattle couldn't graze it, that it would turn into a sea of Italian ryegrass and the bay checker spot populations would disappear. We didn't really know why that was happening, but then in the early 1990s, I put two and two together when I found out about the process called dry nitrogen deposition. Basically, smog is fertilizer on these ecosystems, and because we're down here at the receiving end of the Silicon Valley urban area, which usually has a brown cloud hanging over it, we estimate we get somewhere on the order of 15 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year on these grasslands. So I published that paper in 1999 and it became the best available science that was used by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the California Energy Commission to apply to this power plant here, the Metcalf Energy Center, which had been proposed. So we got together with the power company and the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Energy Commission, and I was like the consultant trying to figure out a good deal for the butterfly, and came up with a mitigation package and was pretty straightforward because the power company wanted a precedent of actually building a new power plant in California. And we wanted a precedent for mitigating for nitrogen emissions because we knew that that could be applied later on. So we worked out a deal where the power company set aside 131 acres, most of which is serpentine grassland and most of which is here on Tulare Hill and then deeded it over to the Land Trust of Santa Clara Valley in perpetuity, along with money for monitoring and managing it. Then we had our precedent for mitigating for the nitrogen emissions, and the next big project that came along was widening Highway 101 from two lanes in each direction to four lanes in each direction. The Fish and Wildlife Service basically wouldn't let them open the newly completed freeway until they came to an agreement on how to mitigate for the big increase in nitrogen emissions because of the increased traffic. So the partners, the Valley Transportation Authority, Santa Clara County, City of San Jose, and a few others kind of worked for about a decade to come up with a plan that would target the vast majority of the bay checker spot butterfly habitat and serpentine grassland, set aside land in perpetuity with monitoring and management. So it's paid for out of various fees on development, including a very novel per car trip nitrogen tax, which turns out to be about $45 for a single family dwelling unit. 
So that plan has been working. And we now have a few thousand acres up on Coyote Ridge that are permanently conserved. Some of the other areas, they're eventually targeting about 42,000 acres. And it, it includes other species like the red-legged frog and the California tiger salamander. 10 of the 19 covered species are related to serpentine soils. And they're talking about conserving about 95% of the remaining serpentine soils in Santa Clara County. So going from that one paper and the observation of, wow, we need cows out here, figuring out the cause of it, which is the smog, and then turning that into environmental mitigation, that paper generated about $700 million worth of mitigation over the next 50 years. My name is Trina Heinzer, and I'm the executive director of the Land Trust of Santa Clara Valley. We're on one of our properties today, and I just wanted to share with you a little bit about our organization. It was uh, created in 1998 by a number of citizens who were passionate about land conservation, and they uh, developed the Land Trust of Santa Clara Valley. Over the past 25 years, our Land Trust has acquired a number of properties that range from open space to agriculture, and we now have a little over 2,000 acres that we are responsible for. We are an accredited land trust, and we became accredited in 2016 by my predecessor, Craig Egerton. We have a board of seven people and a very small staff, but we continue to work with our partners of Valley Habitat Agency, the Open Space Authority, and others in order to continue to acquire properties and care for them in Santa Clara Valley. Going forward, our land trust is we're starting to grow. We're adding more staff and more properties. And just in the last few years, we've acquired another 600 acres, which for us is, is a lot. And we have others in the pipeline. So right in front of us, we have the state flower, the poppy, growing on the state rock, serpentinite. And as an added bonus, we have the state grass, the purple needle grass. This is a perennial grass, so the individuals live many, many years, as opposed to the annuals, which are mainly the non- So this little plant here growing in this crack in the rock is called Luisia rediviva, or bitterroot. It's actually relatively widely distributed across the western U.S., but usually quite locally rare. And the population here in Santa Clara County is an outlier. We're at the limit of the range of this species, which you'll find in the Bitterroot Mountains. Uh, it's named Luisia after Meriwether Lewis, who was the first, and then it was named after him. On a property line here, over on this side to my left, is the Metcalf Energy Center Ecological Reserve. Over on this side is a power line corridor owned by PG&E. They made Calpine put up a fence along this property line. Well, that means that the 200 acres or so north of the fence could not be grazed by the cattle. A few years later, it was an incredible stand of Italian ryegrass and thatch so by 2005, the habitat over on PG&E side, plus the 100 plus acres that they didn't own was gone. And the checker spot population on Tulare Hill went extinct. So we started a process in 2004 that led to what's called a safe harbor agreement by 2008. It took about four years of grazing to have the habitat rejuvenated with wildflowers and breaking down all of the grass. We reintroduced the bay checker spot onto Tulare Hill starting in 2013 because the habitat had gotten good enough. We'd go bring uh, 3,000 to 5,000 caterpillars that we'd collect over on Coyote Ridge and just drop them off here, spreading the larva, as we say. And uh, so we got a population established here. By 2015, there were you know, 10,000 plus bay checker spots occupying Tulare Hill. Then we had a series of really, really bad weather years for the checker spots. So the population collapsed. 
down below a thousand. So it's been hanging on at low levels. They're still occupied out here. So I have a quasi-scientific measure I call the coefficient of beauty, which is when your eyes just start buzzing with flowers like this. And I even have a scientific terminology for it, which is I sub B, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And then when we have moments like this, we call it I sub B max. Tilari Hill on the uh, north side of Coyote Valley is an important part, uh, important area for our local birds. This is a short grass serpentine habitat, and there are a lot of birds that enjoy this area specifically. Horned lark comes to mind, western meadow lark. We've even had from time to time burrowing owl show up during winter. Now we have a, a small and threatened population of breeding birds on the bay, but we're hoping that maybe they'll take to this area as well. The rocky outcroppings here on this hilltop as we've been walking, we've had rock wren singing. It's an uncommon bird around here and they love this habitat, as well as the horned larks that we've had flying overhead and uh, landing in the grass. This is a wonderful area. And as I mentioned before, the, the burrowing owl has from time to time shown up in winter. And we're hoping that it'll take to the area and perhaps breed here at some point. We've got some burrowing owls in Coyote Valley as part of a reintroduction program. The skies overhead, we have raptors that love this area, particularly in winter. Golden Eagle, Prairie Falcon, Peregrine Falcon, American Kestrel, Cooper's Hawk. This is a fabulous place for our migrating raptors. Nesting birds that love this particular habitat, Western Meadowlark. Uh, it's a very beautiful yellow bird. The back is kind of a streaky brown, so in the summertime it really blends in, and it loves nesting in the bushes and in the grass in this area. Lark sparrow, another fabulous bird that likes this short grass habitat here. There's so many birds that like make this area or pass through this area on migration. Tulare Hill is the closest place where two mountain ranges meet. The Santa Cruz Mountains to the west and the Mount Hamilton Range to the east. And this is a critical wildlife linkage for animals to move back and forth mainly the mountain lion. So we also have on Coyote Ridge to the east of us a herd of reintroduced tule elk, one of three elk species in the United States. And someday we hope that the elk will come down from the hillside and will reside out here in the valley, which is where they normally would come in the winter. Relatively soon in the next few weeks, I actually am meeting with Post and a number of the uh, partners to look specifically at this site to do a feasibility study and find out is this really the right location and to have people like that taking a look at our particular preserve just means a great deal because it just shows that it's that important. So this is a little poem that I wrote uh, a few weeks ago about Tulare Hill. Gentle cool breezes brush my cheeks, warm spring sun bathes the lingering Winter's grip to Larry Hill in spring. Mud piles up on my boots. Thick clay from a protracted winter's deluge. The drought, an obscure memory. Blossoms become a symphony, tuning up their instruments of color and anxious anticipation. This symphony has no conductor, no direction but the innate knowing learned over millennia. Spring is dramatic hues drape the hillside, the intensity growing day by day. At first slow, subtle, and lyrical, building to a rousing crescendo. As days warm and grow longer, a melody develops, unique each year, expressing all the natural elements from the retreating winter. Welcome friends, enjoy the symphony. Music without an audience is indeed a lonely endeavor.